My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for taking this time and being with us this morning. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let us know where you're coming in from. Fantastic. Hi, guys. My name is Daniel Mulligan. I'm from New Jersey, and I work in international business, import and export, as well as invest in real estate all around the world. I'm actually currently live from Moscow, believe it or not, actually. I'm here in Moscow. We'll be here for about a couple of weeks. And uh, we are just moving around doing our stuff. And uh, I actually got to know the mastermind group uh, basically a while back. And it's an honor to be here, actually, to share my ideas with you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very, very excited to share with you. Let's dive into it. Thinking Grow Rich. When did you start? How did you start? Well, first of all, I'm a huge fan of personal development. And believe it or not, one of the first books I've ever read in the field of uh, personal development was indeed the book Think and Grow Rich. Although my most favorite book from Napoleon Hill actually is the book The Master Key to Riches, uh, because that book really taught me a lot about how to change your mindset about basically success in all areas, including wealth and finances. And quite frankly, I'm a huge fan of trying to change the inner uh, in order for you to change the outer, basically. And having been mentored by Brian Tracy and Tony Robbins, I really understand the importance of uh, somehow altering the way you look at the world and how you can actually become someone else. And for that reason, I had the actual chance to read this book a while back. It was probably about uh, 10 years ago where I first read this book. And ever since, I've been applying those principles and I find them very, very useful and very uh, basically amazing to actually have that chance. Let me ask you a question. What are some of the principles that you're realizing today in your success that I think are monumental to your success? Because I know a lot of us, especially entrepreneurs. That's right. We have our strong suit. We have some principles that we love to really focus on. Some people is desire. Some people is faith. Some people is, you know, specialized knowledge. Some people specialize in mastermind group. But what are some of the principles that you utilize so far? Believe it or not, I think of the first principle actually to be the most important because desire, as uh, basically Napoleon Hill mentioned, was the uh, cornerstone because I believe that every single day we are focusing on a lot of things. I mean, the world now is riddled with all sorts of basically back and forth information. And we are hearing basically information coming from all around the world. And once you have the opportunity to look at what it really means to change your perspective and to think about what you want, I think that will take care of the rest. And for that very reason, for me, the first principle of desire uh, was probably the most important of all, because I believe that if you want to do that, especially if you co uh, combine that with a third principle, which was auto-suggestion and visualization, that will give you a huge edge. Uh, so, I mean, every morning we wake up, we have a lot of thoughts in our heads, and we're somehow, somehow worried about a lot of things. Uh, I should pay my lousy bills. I should go there. I should do this. But uh, Napoleon Hill suggests that you should actually focus first on building that inner desire and drive to get what you want, and more importantly, to visualize the desired outcome. Because a lot of us, unfortunately, we are not like that. We do not focus our attention on getting what we desire. We instead are worried about the things we don't like. Like, what's, what's, what's this problem? What's that problem? And uh, Napoleon Hill actually reminded me, and ever since I've been using his principle, to first build that desire up through constant, uh, basically, uh, uh, visualization as well as imagination, and then work on yourself day and night to actually achieve those goals. However, quite frankly, I'm also a huge fan of specialized knowledge, as you put it, because in the modern world, Richard National is writing a book about how it's uh, somehow not important to uh, somehow uh, have a lot of specialized knowledge and such so you just learn a lot of things about different fields. I'm so much against that because uh, as it was mentioned in the book Mastery by Robert Greene, true power actually comes from being really good at what you do. So ever since uh, basically I read that book, I said, I want to be a master. I don't want to just do a lot of different things. I want to focus, which is why I actually focus on international business because I was a polyglot, so I was traveling the world and I want to like make it you know, somehow into a business. And for that reason, I do believe that it's very critical and important to first build that desire, then visualize the desired outcome, and then work on acquiring that specialized knowledge. Once you have all these three taken care of, then I guess you'll be almost unstoppable. I, I agree with that. Whoever said you shouldn't specialize in something, something is wrong with them. I, I think so, yeah. I, I, I think that's like a new motto of the modern entrepreneurs. 
because yeah. they have a lot of things like, uh, you know, the technology aspect of it, the social media, all those things. So they want to do a lot of things, but I'm so much against that. I really believe that it's so critically important to be able to get like a laser beam focused on one field and get that niche that you really want to somehow uh, be able to impact the world in some meaningful way, because uh, the world right now is filled with people who are not good at, you know, particularly at anything. And once you get really good at something, it really changes your perspective and allows you to uh, somehow conquer the marketplace that you're working in or acquire, the, you know, the kind of results that people are like, wow, how did you do that? It's very simple. You just focus on one thing while all the other people were busy doing 25 things at the same time. And that's really, I think, uh, the biggest uh, impact that I've received from reading this amazing book by Napoleon Hill. No, definitely. Specialized knowledge is very, very important. Listen, if you if you have a heart condition, you go to hospital, you want a specialized person, you want someone who specializes in heart, exactly. not your foot, to do the surgery. So it's specialized. Knowledge. When you go to, to, you know, my wife is an attorney, and right. she doesn't do all types of law. She specifically applies a certain knowledge that she has on a specific field of law. It's not just law in totality. Yes, she knows about a little things here and there, but she focuses on one single area. You know, so to me, definitely, you need to have that specialized knowledge. Here is what I think maybe some people take it as. You should know and kind of touch on a lot of different fields that are related to your field. Of so course. if there is any connection or there's any gaps, you can close. But that doesn't mean you should be a computer scientist and then be a doctor and then be an attorney at the same time. That doesn't, uh, that you gotta, you gotta definitely hone in on one thing and be the master of that. Then once you master it, I'm okay with you dabbling on different areas. I'm cool with that. So here's Absolutely. my question. Sure. How does one person create that burning desire? Or how do they know that that field is their burning desire? That's so true. Actually, I guess uh, this question asked a lot uh, because sometimes we talk about this on our podcast as well. And they ask, so how can I know exactly what I want? I mean, the biggest question I've ever received all the time, like everybody like asks me, so how can I know what I really want? And my answer is always the same. And I tell them all, number one, ask yourself, because I really believe that your desire is with you since a very young age. I mean, if you look back right now, I mean, right now I'm talking to you, of course, uh, Vahid, and I think that you will have a tremendous experience in this regard, but I'm pretty sure that if you look back at your childhood, you see some roots that brought you here today to be an influencer, basically, on social media. And uh, I often tell this uh, to people like, number one, look back at your childhood and ask yourself, what types of, for example, talents did you think you were having at that age? And what types of compliments were you receiving at, you know, in your school? Like maybe they told you you're really good when you're dancing. Uh, or perhaps you're so good with numbers or maybe you're very great at acting or whatever it is, right? And secondly, I asked them, ask yourself, what type of people are you habitually and consistently envious of? Because, I mean, let's be honest, I use the example of, you know, uh, soccer players. Of course, in the U.S., uh, we love football, especially, you know, uh, a lot of great teams. And, of course, I'm a huge fan of Jets as well, just like Gary Vee. But the point is, uh, and, and all across the world, soccer is a very, very popular sport. It's a lot more popular basically in, around the world than, let's say, football is in the U.S. So uh, I asked people, like, uh, I myself, I've never, ever had the desire to become another Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, who is a superstar in the field of soccer. Uh, but I'm sure there are a lot of people who, when they look at uh, Ronaldo, they say, I want to be him, right? And I tell them that that's not what I want, and that's not what everybody wants. On the other hand, there are certain people that we tend to see, and we say, like, boy, I sure wish I had that kind of life, but I don't have it, right? Now, every one of us could be almost envious anybody at any some point, at some point, it's quite normal, right? However, ask yourself, what are certain people or industries or activities that you are consistently feeling, uh, you know, uh, so, sort of uh, inclination towards. And you're like, I see that people like, I really want to be that person. And I think that's going to show you how you can actually discover that desire. Because uh, by looking at other examples of people who have self-actualized and have achieved something of significance, could, could be an author, could be, let's say, a politician, could be an entrepreneur, could be a, an entertainer, it doesn't really matter. If you find yourself consistently envious of certain people, the chances are you have certain talents that those people also possess that you can actually use to get better at. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of being jealous or envious. I mean, we, don't know all about, we all know about this whole hater story, right? However, 
let's be honest, there are times when you look at certain figures and characteristics uh, and you say like, boy, I sure wish I had that kind of life. And I think by doing that through this uh, process of comparison, we can fully understand, yes, this is for me. Uh, for example, your wife, Laid, is a lawyer. Uh, I probably would not seem like extreme. Like if I look at your, uh, I'm, I'm sure I mean, there are a lot of people out there who would think of your lawyer, uh, basically your wife as a lawyer and say like, wow, I wish I had that level of success. Uh, that his wife has, but some people actually will not have that. They don't really care about it. And the same thing applies to you as an influencer or as anybody else. So by looking at these people, we then realize, yes, this is what I want. Why? Because I believe that you cannot have tremendous desire for something without simultaneously having the ability, the potential, and the talent to realize it. Both are very critical and both are very, very important. And that is why I believe that once you start with desire, and you ask yourself, what are my talents? What have been the kind of compliments I've received? And what types of things I desired so much growing up? And then you combine that with your current, uh, basically, uh, ambitions, as well as sense of envy towards uh, modern figures, then you realize, yeah, maybe I like that. And once you know that, of course, you probably can discover yourself and you can say, yes, this is exactly what I want. And then it becomes a lot easier to make decisions about taking things forward and focusing on that thing that you truly desire. I agree with that. Very well put. So you, it is your personal belief that the first principle, there is a reason why that that was out of all principles first, or you think they were put randomly? I don't think so, because I really believe that that's the seed. The desire is the seed, because uh, that desire is really what puts us. I and mean, we say, like, you know, do what you love, right? What I really mean is do what you truly desire, what you're good at, because uh, if you don't have that, if you don't know what you truly desire, then the chances are you will make a lot of wrong decisions and you'll spend a lot of your time doing things you should not be doing. And on the other hand, if you really do something, I, mean, I know a lot of my friends, just right now I was talking to one of my friends, she's a lawyer and just like your wife, and she doesn't particularly love her field, but kind of she likes it. But I can assure you, as soon as push comes to the shove and there's gonna be some sort of problems in the industry, probably she might not want to actually stick around. Maybe she will change careers, right? But once you have that desire, that desire is a force, is a source of energy and enthusiasm. And it tells you, yes, I want to do this. I want to go for it. And because of that, you will have a great opportunity uh, to uh, push through the barriers. Because another one of those key principles in that book was actually persistence. How do you persist? Very simple. If you choose what you love, then persistence becomes automatic. You don't have to even do anything. You just they say, this is what I want, and I'm going to persist no matter what. And that, that is why I believe that the desire is not just the first principle, it's the foundation upon which all others are uh, rested. And in his other uh, book, basically, uh, Napoleon Hill, in his book, Master to Riches, he also, in that book, talked about self-discipline. And he also said that self-discipline is the foundation upon which all others are rested. So I really believe that if you look at both books, then you realize it all first begins with that desire. That's the foundation upon which every other thing is rested. I mean, how do you go for a specialized knowledge if you don't really love your field, right? I mean, exactly. how much time do you want to spend? You have no desire for it, right? Exactly. And how do you want to persist when things are tough? And how do you want to actually, uh, you know, visualize the desired outcome if you don't even care that much about the desired outcome, right? So that is why I believe this is absolutely not random. And Napoleon has put this there because he knows that this is the alpha and all the other things will continue until the omega, which is the 13th principle. So ultimately, I believe there's ne uh, basically, this is, there's a clear reason here, and that is why I believe that desire stands as the most important principle of all in Think and Grow Rich. I agree with that 100%, because there will be tough times on your, on your path for success, and if you don't have the burning desire, and you really don't want it that bad, you'll probably, chances are, when the going gets tough, you know, you're probably going to throw the towel in and quit. Absolutely. The only way to keep it going is if you want to do that. Listen, Absolutely there's true. definitely more stuff that I want to discuss with you, and, and, and I know you're a busy man, so this is what I want to do. I want to definitely have my team reach out to you. We want to do a couple of more live sessions, and I want to go into a little bit more because I think specialized knowledge is a big whole topic by itself that we Absolutely. need to dive in, especially this day and age where a lot of entrepreneurs they need to know a little bit about a few areas to make their business more successful. If Absolutely. you're an entrepreneur and doesn't know about social media, 
you're going to have a little bit of a hard time. If you're a physician and you don't know how you how to generate leads, how to take care of your clients, how to you know put them into a, a, a consistent funnel where you could definitely get feedback from them on how to improve your service, you're probably not going to survive around. If you're a CPA or accountant, you don't know how to generate new clients, especially in this day and age, your competition is probably going to put you out of business. So you do need to know about a few other industries that are related and that have a direct contribution to your success in your industry. So I think we need to explore that a little bit more. Of when course, are you definitely. coming back uh, Before you go, I just wanted a quick point about uh, Henry Ford once said, I don't know everything that I have to know about my business, but I can hire those who know them, right? So I definitely agree with you in this regard. So you're, uh, we should have a, a basic knowledge of a variety of fields. And right now, in, for example, in our podcast, uh, basically my partner and the producer, uh, Pujix, he is basically the guy behind all the tech stuff. He knows all of it pretty well. I don't have as much knowledge as he does, not even close. But of course, I know a little bit. However, I let him do that as well. So part of that, again, mastermind, which is another great principle in uh, Napoleon Hill, is exactly for this. Because once you go for specialized knowledge, then it becomes almost difficult to almost know about everything, which is why having that mastermind, having that group and team, with, uh, with, with, you know, somehow each one of them have, have their own, basically, uh, specialized knowledge, if you will, this creates a very strong team uh, where they can get solid results and actually go for it. So I agree with you in that regard. We should know a little thing about, uh, basically about a, a lot of things, but I believe that going for that specialized knowledge, having that laser focus gives you a tremendous advantage when it comes to competition and to, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship these days and to get the best results because we want to somehow stand out in this huge crowd of, entrepreneurs and figures. So that specialized knowledge is, is going to give you that edge to stand out and of course, go for a larger amount of business in the future. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. Hopefully we'll get to do more with you and have yeah. a safe flight, have a safe trip coming back, brother. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. You too. Take care.